What is up, people? I uh, hope you're doing great. I'm still here. We're still going through uh, chapter three, right? Hey, this is the end of chapter three. So we're going to take another look um, at one of our new functions we learned about in 3.7, absolute value function, right? This is probably the most important one out of all of them, right? We had those piecewise functions, um, and we won't see them too frequently. Uh, we had the step functions in the term of the greatest integer function. Won't see that too frequently either, but what we will see are our good friends, absolute value functions. So we're going to take another look at those. In particular, if you had fun with 3.5 transformations, mm. you are going to love today uh, because we're going to do transformations with our friend absolute value functions. Okay. Again, vertex, this is just going to be the lowest or the highest point, um, as we'll find out on our absolute value functions. Remember, uh, these functions, guys, they take that V shape, right? So, you know, they might look something like that, okay? We'll find out today, too. Again, it, in this case, right, vertex, bam, going to be right there, right? That's going to be the lowest point, absolute minimum. That was like 2-7. Um, we could also see them, guys, right, flip around and go kind of upside down and look like that. Here, the vertex actually the highest point. Okay. We're probably going to do domain and range, right? Well, actually, I don't think we're going to do any domain and range today. Maybe we will. Who's to say? I don't even know. All right. Anyway, let's get into the fun, folks. Um, absolute value functions. Yep, here we go. Vertex. Again, we should know how to put these into Desmos, right? Use Desmos to graph these until you get really comfortable with them, right? Like, the absolute value of XX looks just like this, okay? It goes through the origin, Right? It just has a slope of negative one here, has a slope of positive one here. All good, easy, easy. Okay, uh, graph this, state the domain and range, and describe how the graph relates to this one. Okay. Um, I don't have Desmos turned on. All good, we can grab it here. So here is, here is this one, guys. All right, so the absolute value Right, of X looks literally just like this, okay? If we're going to graph this one, think about when we have a number outside of the expression, what does that do to my graph? Right, this is just simply, guys, this is an up, down, or left, right move. Right, we don't have any of those goofy numbers in front of it that are going to do the compressions or the stretches and all that fun stuff. So this just says up four, right? So we would go up you know, uh, one, two, three, maybe here's four units. And now it's literally going to have the exact same shape. It just goes up four units, okay? Um, domain and range, okay. So I'm assuming they just want the domain and range of this function. So this is the point zero comma four. Okay, so domain, all real numbers, right? We scan to the left, we scan to the right. Right? We go negative infinity, positive infinity, however you guys want to write that. Range, different story. It's not all real numbers. Again, how low does it go? Well, it doesn't get any lower than that vertex right there at 4. Okay, And then it goes up forever. So um, on the range, guys, if you wanted to write that as, hey, 4 to infinity, that makes me happy. If you want to write it as a compound inequality, um, less than or equal to y less than infinity. That's fine too. If you'd like to write it as a, all the y values that are greater than or equal to four, again, three different ways, they all mean the same thing, guys. Eventually I want you to be able, to, I, would, I can't talk for starters, but I would like you to be able to write it in any of these forms just so that we can recognize it and understand that, hey, all three of these are really telling me the same thing, okay? All right. Um, describe how the graph is related. We said it's the same one. It just goes up four units, right? If this was a minus four, right? Absolute value of x minus four, that would just go down four units, okay? But it's not. It said plus. All right. Fair enough. All right. Graph this one. State the domain and range. Describe, okay, how it's related to that. I should not have erased my other function. All right. Again, here is our you can think of this, guys, as our parent function, okay? If we're going to graph this one, again, it's inside that expression, that absolute value expression. 
right? This is not an up or down move now. This is going to be a left or right move. Lock in your guess. I'm going to graph it up here. Um, okay, one, two. Here we go. All right, so guys, x plus 3, this is really a goes left 3 units move, okay? So describe how the graph is related. Um, it is just left 3 units, right? Domain and range. Again, domain, all x values still, right? We're getting to all negatives, all positives, everything there. Range, once again, look for that vertex, right? That vertex here. This is at uh, negative 3, we hope, new, new, yes, sorry, negative 3, 0, comma, 0, there we go, okay? So um, this doesn't get any lower than that point right there. So how high does it go? Infinity. How low does it go? Well, my y value here is 0, all right? So once again, guys, we can write all those different for my range, we can write all of those different ones. Hey, y values greater than or equal to zero. Zero is less than y, less than infinity, or you can go zero to infinity, okay? Any of those three, whatever you're comfortable with, I like them all. Actually, my favorite, probably interval notation, right? Just because we get to write less, and it looks really cool. I don't know, okay. So again, absolute value functions, guys, these aren't too bad. And here's the deal, folks. If we are not sure of what's going on, right, guys, I want you to graph these, right, and then figure this out. Okay. So how is this graph related to the other one? All right. So as usual, okay, here is our parent function, the absolute value of x. Okay. Think about what two moves, right, is this negative sign and this one-third going to do to my graph, okay? Well, we can just take them as they come. The negative sign, guys, is going to make it flip over the x-axis. So that's the very first thing it's going to do, right? So it's here, right? It will flip over my x-axis, right? Or we call that reflection, okay? So that's the first thing it's going to do. So we could write that down, right? So first thing is a reflection over the x-axis, okay? Second thing is, what does the one-third do, right? Well, one-third, it's not in with my expression, right, which you can think of like I'm, I'm making my hands do like the parentheses, okay? If it's not inside, it's not going to be a horizontal move, okay? So this is a vertical what, right? So this is a vertical compression, that's right. I heard somebody say it. But again, we just like to put in there by whatever factor it is. In this case, it's by one-third. Okay? So that means it's, it's going to get less steep. Okay? So it was here, right, at this steepness. I have to make it less steep. So should, should I draw my lines, like, in this way, or should I draw my lines out that way? Hmm. Um, here's what it's going to look like here. I'm going to erase this. Erase this one. So guys, it's going to look like this. That, that kind of still looks the same. Um, there you go. So it's, it is going to be much less steep. Okay? So yes. Those are the two moves, right, that this one does for me. Again, I graphed it up here just because I know what it does. When you guys don't, you don't need to do this. You need to go to Desmos. You need to plug in these two. Here's my parent function. Here's my new one. Let that help you with what is going on, right? These moves should be much easier to see than just our linear functions, okay? All right, so make that go away. All right, um, graph this, state the domain and range and describe how the graph is related to this. Well, doesn't this one look very similar to the graph we just had a second ago? I mean, yeah, it kinda, kinda does, guys. Okay, so f of x, um, so they've got, guys, they've actually graphed. This is this function right here, okay? Um, here is, right, my parent function, right? f of x equals the absolute value of x. So state the domain and range. Well, again, domain, all real numbers, range, y values greater than or equal to zero, 
Okay? Again, in all the different ways we can write that. Uh, compound inequality, we can write it with an uh, interval notation as well. Describe how the graph is related. Well, it's interesting, right? So, you know, we would think to ourselves, oh, this is two moves, right? Hey, negative sign is inside that expression. So this one's going to reflect over the y. Okay? One third, okay, now it's inside the parentheses, right? Um, so we can, sure, I guess we can write that down. So, you know, reflect over y. Here's the deal, guys. We're never even really going to notice it because when we reflect, right, over the y, it looks identical to what it is. So who's to say that it really did reflect? I don't know. I don't know. But it did. Trust me. <laughs> All right. Thing number two, what does this one-third do? Well, now it's inside, right, our parentheses. So this is a horizontal um, stretch by one-third, okay? It gets stretched horizontally. It gets longer, right? This would be, if we, like, made the blue line get longer, we can pull it outwards, right? That's a horizontal stretch, I suppose, okay? Again, by a factor of one-third. Um, I think we did everything there. You guys enjoying absolute value functions? No. What is wrong with you people? Okay. Good news, guys. This is like our last one of the day here. Okay. Um, it says the function, here it is, 2 times the absolute value of x minus 25. Models a swimmer's distance in meters from the far end of the pool after x seconds. So here is our distance in meters. Here is our time down here from the far end. Um, how many meters is the swimmer from the far end of the pool when the timing begins? Is that all they want to know? We're going to add a few questions in here. Okay, so graph this function, they did that. Okay, here it is right here. Well, I did that. You probably don't have that in there, so you probably need to draw that in there. So there it is. Again, guys, we can hop on a Desmos. We would put this in here. Okay? Now, think about domain and range in the case of this problem, right? Well, look, we know in Desmos, whoo, this slide's going on forever back here. But we can't have negative time. So we have to start here at 0 and 50, right? That's, that's the y-intercept of this graph. And it comes down here, right, and then goes back down away up here. Um, so how far is the, the swimmer from the end? Well, they're this far away, right? They're getting closer, right, with every, you know, they're out there swimming. Whoo, it's good stuff, Okay. So they're 50 meters away. So there's the answer to the question. Okay, so what do, what do these two moves, right? What are the 2 and the 25 compared to our parent function, right, of our normal f of x? I know this question isn't up there. So compared to our parent function, what do those two moves do? So what is the 2 going to do? What is the, the minus 25 going to do? Okay, well... Again, these two questions aren't on there, but one. So what will the two do? Well, that will be a vertical uh, stretch, right, by a factor of two. So that makes it get taller, right? That would make it get taller. And then what does the minus 25 do? Again, it's inside the expression. So this is a left or right move. Which way does it go? It goes that way. So this is a, a right right, 25 units. And that makes sense, guys, because look, here's the vertex, and that vertex is at the point 25 comma zero. We know the parent function is at the origin, zero comma zero. So we would have to go to the right 25 units to get there, okay? So anyway, guys, there's absolute value functions, right? We're still going through all of our transformation moves with them. So this is an opportunity for you Right? If 2, 5 was a little bit fuzzy and you weren't sure about some stuff, okay, this is a chance to get better. We will continue to do transformations with all of our different graphs that we do. So you'll enjoy um, doing these with uh, all of our exponentials and our quadratics when we get there. So uh, anyway, I hope this helped and we can keep on going with our day. See you guys.